Doctors prove the palm olive plan brings two out of three women lovelier complexions in 14 days. For the palm olive plan was tested on women with all types of skin. Dry, oily, even skin that was not clear. Yes, regardless of age, type of skin, or previous beauty care, 36 doctors proved the 14-day palm olive plan brings fresher, brighter, younger-looking complexions. So get palm olive soap and start your 14-day palm olive plan now. Dennis Day. Oh, I make life seem worthwhile. Wells in your eyes and must tell of you smile. Dennis Day is brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. The Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, Charles Dant in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing There Ought to Be a Society. There ought to be a society for the prevention of cruelty to poor unfortunate lovers. Poor unfortunate lovers, poor unfortunate lovers like me. There ought to be a society for the extension of sympathy to poor unfortunate lovers, poor unfortunate lovers, poor unfortunate lovers like me. If you beat up a dog or a cat, you go to jail for the maximum penalty. They got protection laws for the dumb animals. But nobody cares about me when I get beat. So I repeat, there ought to be a society for the prevention of cruelty to poor unfortunate lovers, poor unfortunate lovers, poor unfortunate lovers like me. Oh, when you go for a walk in the zoo, you never try for to beat up the chimpanzee. They got the iron cage and the keeper to boot. The monkey is better than me. He grin at me. Say he agrees. There ought to be a society for the prevention of cruelty to poor unfortunate lovers. Poor unfortunate lovers, poor unfortunate lovers like me. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly, brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. You can actually see and feel the difference. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate's instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over every other brand tested. Yes, preferred over every other brand tested. And no wonder, for Colgate Dental Cream is the result of constant effort to produce the finest toothpaste in the world today. For cleaning teeth, for flavor, for sweetening breath. So see if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate Dental Cream America's favorite toothpaste. Try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth. For a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And always use Colgate Dental Cream after you eat and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth.
Well, as you needn't be told, there are numerous ways for people to get into trouble. Some folks go out looking for it. Others can see it coming but can't avoid it. And still others fall into it unconsciously. It's to this third or unconscious group that our young hero, Dennis Day, belongs. <laughs> which is only reasonable considering the head start he has. Now, take what happened to him yesterday morning, for instance. He was walking down Oak Street quite unconcernedly, minding his own business, when suddenly... Good morning, young man. Good morning. I I'm the inquiring reporter of the Weaverville Bugle, and I'd like to ask you a question uh, for my column. Do you mind? Well, no, not if I can. Good. Uh, what's your name and address? Dennis Day, 324 Elm Street. Gee, I thought it was going to be tougher than that. Uh, <laughs> that uh, isn't the question, my boy. What I want to know is your opinion of women. Women? Yes. Do you think the women of today are prepared for motherhood? Gee, I hope so. If they're not, I don't know who to tell to get ready. Uh, no, no, uh, you don't understand, sir. I'm looking for a good, controversial statement on the subject of women. Oh. Now, uh, do you happen to be in love with more than one woman? Me? Of course not. That's what I want. I have no love for the overwhelming majority of women, says Mr. Dennis Day of 324 Elm Street. Hey, wait. What's a little housework, cooking, washing, and baby minding, continues Mr. Day. It's the men who do the real work in this world. Women should get out on their knees to them. But all I... What a statement. Mr. Day, you took the words right out of my mouth. Well, maybe we still have time to put them back in. <laughs> You're not going to print this, are you? Well, I'm only quoting what you said, Mr. Day. Hey, tell me, do you think women have good reasons for always whining and complaining? But they don't. Women have no good reasons for always whining and complaining. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Hey, you... Do you know why women should be treated as your equals, Mr. Day? No, why? Dennis Day doesn't know why women should be treated as... <laughs> Mr. Please, you can't do this to me. Why not? You believe the man should be the head of the family, don't you? Well, yes, but you I... You think if a man asks his wife a civil question, she should answer him, don't you? Well, sure, but... a boy. Women should speak when they're spoken to, says Mr. <laughs> now you're talking. I must be doing it in code. <laughs> Mr. Day, I congratulate you. There isn't one man in a thousand who'd come out to say the things you have. Including me. Everything I say, you twist around. I demand that you print my exact words. Well, all right. If that's the way you feel, I'll use a direct quotation from you for my lead line. Uh, do you wear perfume, Mr. Day? Perfume? Of course not. Why not? Well, it makes a person smell. Well, women wear it, don't they? Well, sure, but... Wonderful. Goodbye, and thank you for a great lead line. What lead line? Dennis Day says women smell. <laughs> Boy, what happened? So back our hero slunk to the Anderson boarding house where he knew it was the better part of valor to say nothing of his interview, especially to his landlady, Mrs. Anderson, and his girlfriend, Mildred. But he also knew what would happen when the paper came out the following morning, and sure enough, just after he had risen... Oh, my golly, here it comes. Oh, it's you, Mr. Anderson. Dennis, you doll face, you dream boat, you joy boy. <laughs> Huh? This article of yours in the paper. This Emancipation Proclamation for Husbands. Women should not be treated as equals. They should get down their knees to the men. Where'd you ever get such magnificent ideas? Well, gee, I don't know, but every time that reporter opened his mouth, I seemed to have another one. <laughs> You're a hero, my boy. Why, there isn't a husband in this whole town who doesn't feel like a different man toward his wife this morning. Gee, even you? <laughs> Wow. Well, I've had five phone calls from friends this morning, and they all feel like I do. My boy, this could develop into a crusade. You mean we men are going to demand equal rights with women? <laughs> Dennis, please, I said we were crusaders, not radicals. <laughs> oh, beg pardon. But there's a feeling inside me this morning that I never had before, and I wouldn't be surprised but what it's courage. Courage? Certainly seems to be, from the descriptions I've read of it. <laughs> oh, gosh, Mr. Anderson, how are the women going to take this... Uh-oh, Jiggers, here comes your wife. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Anderson. Don't you good morning me, Dennis Day. Are you responsible for this article in the newspaper? You're darn right he's responsible. You want to make something out of it? <laughs> Perfect 
Anderson, are you addressing me? Well, I ain't addressing John L. Lewis, kiddo. <laughs> it's about time you women learned a little respect for us men. You understand? Why? Uh, why? Yes, Herbert. Good. Now drag those big feet of yours to the stove and get me some breakfast. <laughs> Lover. See what my friend wants here, too. <laughs> I should cook breakfast for Dennis Day over my dead body. Look out, kiddo. That can be arranged. <laughs> yes, Herbert. Uh, what would you like, Dennis? Gee, Mrs. Anderson, ma'am, I... Dennis, stop I... fumbling around. Climb on the bandwagon. Enjoy! <laughs> Okay, I... I'd like a couple of three-minute eggs. Very well. And make it fast, understand? I want you back here with them in two minutes. <laughs> Very well, Poopsie. Uh... Oh, my gosh, it's the millennium. Didn't I tell you? It's that interview. All over town, men are acting just like me. Son, we owe you a debt of gratitude we can never repay. Gee, imagine. Why, I had no idea. I never... Oh, there you are, Dennis Day. Oh, hello, Mildred. Don't you even speak to me, you... you man, you! Dennis, did you hear what she called you? Yeah, even I've been promoted. <laughs> I suppose you think you're pretty smart, don't you? You and your interview. Up and at her, Dennis. Remember, this is the revolution. Yeah, watch your tone, Mildred Anderson. Just remember your sex. Your party is no longer in power. <laughs> what? Turn in your belt, kiddo. You're not wearing the pants anymore. <laughs> Today, I only spoke to you at all because I had this note for you. Here, and goodbye. Attaboy, Dennis. Keep women at a distance. That's our motto. Gee, I don't know. Do you think we'll enjoy them just as fully that way? <laughs> More. Well, now, who's the note from? Aren't you going to open it? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, of course. Gee, it's from some man I don't even know. Dear Mr. Day, read what you said about women in this morning's paper. If you are still alive when this re letter reaches you, I have a job open for you. But if you are not available, at least send me your autograph. Sincerely yours, H.R. Norwood, owner of the Bonton Shoe Store. Wow, isn't that great, Mr. Anderson? I'll go see him right away. Didn't I tell you, my boy? You're a hero. You finally become a name in this town. Oh, I always was. But at last I'm becoming one you can say in polite company. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. H.R. Norwood? Y yes? I'm Dennis Day. You wrote me a letter? Oh, oh, I did, I did. Yeah. Sit down, Mr. Day, sit down. My goodness, let me look at you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the boy who said all those glorious things about the opposite, if you'll pardon the expression, sex. <laughs> yes, sir, I guess I am. Oh, my goodness. I never met a man with your courage in my life. I just never did, that's all. No! <laughs> I give you my word, when I read your article, my hair just stood on, if you'll pardon the expression, and... <laughs> Gee. What courage, I said to myself. What courage. What courage. What courage. You're hard of hearing? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I just defeat things once in a while. Now, well, I suppose you're wondering about the job I mentioned. Oh, yes, sir, I am. Well, good. Well, you see, I, I sell shoes here, women's shoes. You know why? No, why? I hate women. <laughs> then why do you sell women's shoes? Ah, could you think of a better revenge on them? <laughs> oh, no, sir, but where do I come in? Oh, I can see you've never waited on a woman in the shoe store, my boy. Box after box you pull down from the shelf, and still they're not satisfied. This one's the wrong color, that one's the wrong style. These don't fit. Up the ladder, down the... Fa oh. <laughs> By noon, I am such a nervous wreck that you can hear me puff and if you'll pardon the expression, pant all over the place. <laughs> it does sound kind of wearing. Oh, yes, but it won't be for you. Oh, no, no, no. You'll make them buy the shoes they ought to have. And right away. Me? Well, certainly. You're not afraid of women. You will, if you'll pardon the expression, gird up your, if you'll pardon the expression, loins and fight. But, Mr. Norwood, I... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Now, the pay on this job, I might add, is excellent. The 
pay? How much is it? Uh, well, it used to be $22 a week. But I'll take her. $22 a week? Boy, that's the best offer I ever had. Well, in that case, the dickering is over. <laughs> no, no, you see the deal, my boy. Gee, how can I turn it down? Oh, good lad, good lad. Now, all you have to do... Oh, good gravy, here comes the customer. Now, go to work, my boy. Gosh, already? Ah, don't you worry. This is one of the sweetest customers we have. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Harris. Good morning! <laughs> Welcome, dear lady. My clerk will take excellent care of you, I am sure. Very well. I'd like a pair of black pumps, young man. Sit down. Oh. <laughs> what? You heard me squat. <laughs> What size do you take, Fatso? <laughs> why, why, the ones I have on are three and a half, triple A. And these will be just your size. Here, eight B. <laughs> eight B? Why, I never. I know, and it's about time you started. <laughs> Here's the shoes. Now, give me the money. But I... Come on, give me the money. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> Here. Oh, good boy, Dennis. I knew you could do it. I knew you weren't scared of any woman who ever... Oh, my goodness gracious me. The boy's fainted. We'll continue this day in the life of Dennis Day in just a moment. Meanwhile, here's Dennis to sing, You Were Meant for Me. Dennis certainly started something when he allowed himself to be quoted by an inquiring reporter to the effect that women have a cinch and that the men do all the work. To the men, of course, he's a hero, but to the women... Well, let's listen to a meeting of the distaff side now taking place at the Anderson boarding house. Dennis actually talked to you that way, Mrs. Harris? Why, I can hardly believe it. Since that interview of his appeared, all the men are talking that way. I'll say they are. Do you know what your father said to me this morning, Mildred? What? He told me to shut my big mouth before he kicked it shut. <laughs> Why, he hasn't spoken to me like that since I fell off a horse in 1922 and had both arms in a cast. <laughs> well, now, something's got to be done. Why don't we show the men how easy our job is? Let them do what we've been doing for a while, and we'll lead the lives they've been leading. Oh, golly, Mrs. Harris, that sounds wonderful. Not to me, it doesn't. I'd have to go back to doing the housework around here. <laughs> but not the cooking, Mother. Oh, I think it's a marvelous idea. We'll call every woman in town and get them started right away. Yes. Let's see how the men like doing women's work for a change. <laughs> and it'll certainly be fun for us doing what the men do. <laughs> yes, I've got a slight head start. <laughs> a head start? Sure. I've been enjoying my husband's cigars for years now. <laughs> How's the dinner coming, Dennis? All right, I guess. Gee, Mr. Anderson, wasn't it kind of peculiar, your wife leaving a note saying she and Mildred wouldn't be home for supper, and if we wanted any, we should cook it ourselves? Well, it is a little peculiar, but we'll show them that we can cook just as good a dinner as they can. 
Did you taste that soup yet, Dennis? Yeah. The soup over here in this pot is cooler, but it tastes better, I think. That's the dishwater from lunch. <laughs> oh. Are the baked potatoes nearly ready? Mashed potatoes. I thought you said we were going to have baked potatoes. We were, but they fell on the floor and I stepped on them by mistake. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, say, do you suppose those steaks of mine are done by now? Well, how long have you had them on? Well, let's see. It's 8.15. Uh, oh, about an hour. <laughs> oh, give them a little longer. We don't want them raw. <laughs> no, I guess not. Uh, did you take a look at those muffins? No, I guess I better. Yeah, we've got to watch them. I don't like them dark brown. How do you feel about jet black? <laughs> My, I'm glad Poopsie didn't see those. Take them out, Dennis. Okay. Dear, dear. Well, now, don't you worry. We'll show those women that us men can take over. You bet we will. Sure. Why not? Men can do anything that women can do. Darn right they can. Oh, say, isn't that someone coming up the walk, Mr. Anderson? Yes, so it is. It's Mr. Harris. Why, good heavens, he's carrying a baby. Gee, you don't suppose he... <laughs> oh, of course not. I'll let him in. Hello, Mr. Harris. Gee, fellas, look what I had. What? To take care of. Oh. Uh, well, yes, my wife and daughter went out and left him with me. Got kind of lonely. He's only four months old and doesn't say much. <laughs> so I came over here for some company. Well, good. Now, you're just in time for dinner. I'll have it on the table in a jiffy. Gee, you're lucky the little fella's sleeping so nice and peacefully, Mr. Harris. Most babies don't, you know. Yeah, I know. But I gave this one a little shot of whiskey before we... <laughs> We're fine. See? There's male brains. I'll guarantee a woman never would have thought of that. No. But I wish I knew what to do when it's time to change him. They didn't leave me any instructions on that. Oh, I can show you that, Miss Harris. I don't go to the movies twice a week for nothing, you know. Hand me a napkin. Yeah, uh, here you are. Let's see this. Well, first you take this end and crisscross it to the other side and pin it. Like this, yeah. see? Mm -hmm. Then you crisscross the other side over to this one and pin it. Now you take the under flap and pull it over here and pin it like this. Now what? Well, if I could think of a way to get my hand out, it'd be perfect. <laughs> Better just let him sleep, Mr. Harris. Now, dinner's all set. Uh, sit down, boys. Okay. Well, dig in, everybody. You first, Mr. Harris. You're the oldest. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? You've lived your life already. <laughs> I suppose it, it looks fine, but to tell the truth, I'm not very hungry. You know something? I kind of wish I had my wife back. Yeah, this isn't very much... Hey, isn't that somebody outside? Our wives. They finally come home to apologize. <laughs> oh, so that she said. Really? I thought you said itching. <laughs> well, and just where have you three been until this hour? Around. We dropped in at the pool room and shot a little snooker. <laughs> Snooker. Yes, and then we stopped in at the fight for a few minutes. And we wound up at the burlesque show. Wow! <laughs> that second boy from the left. Hey, Clara! <laughs> <laughs> you ain't just beating your gums, kiddo. Well, uh, did you boys have a nice evening together? We kind of missed you, ladies. Oh, you'll get used to it in a few months. No, Poopsie, don't say that. You did this to us, Dennis Day. Me? Yes, with that fool interview of yours. Please, ladies, reconsider. Take us back the way we were. Give us men our happy slavehood again. <laughs> well... Please, uh... Mrs. Anderson. I was wrong to talk about women the way I did. There's room in this world for two sexes. In fact, in many ways, it's a very nice arrangement. <laughs> well, do you really think you've learned your lesson, Herbert? Oh, I have. I do, Cuddles, I do. Take me back, please. Very well. If you're truly sorry, we'll forget this ever happened. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, Poopsie, you darling. Come here and let me clasp you to my manly stomach once again. <laughs> Now, 
Dennis Day will be back in just one minute to sing Song of Songs. But first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, hair that gleams and glistens from a luster cream shampoo. Yes, for soft, glamorous green girl hair, try luster cream shampoo. Now in convenient tubes or jars, whichever you prefer. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair with new three-way loveliness. Fragrantly clean, glistening with sheen, soft, easy to manage. Not a soap, not a liquid, but an utterly new, rich lathering cream shampoo. A blend of secret ingredients plus lanolin. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, tubes or jars, 49 and 25 cents. Be a dream girl. A lovely luster cream girl. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. Here now is Dennis with the music of Charles Dant and the orchestra singing... Song of Songs. Do you recall that night in June when first we met? Do you remember, love, the words we spoke? Have you forgotten all the tender vows we made in the silence? Tune in to another Dennis Day show brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous, dream girl hair. This is Vern Smith speaking. Good night, everyone. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.